Design Shop has a lot of tools and features, so let's take a minute to our Design Shop and see where all those tools and features can be found. To start off, I want to look at the very top bar, which is right about here. And what that's going to show you is the level of software that you have. So in this case, I'm using Design Shop Pro Plus. You can see that. And then beside that, you have the name of the project that you're working in. And so right now, because I've not saved anything, it is listed as Project 1. Next, I want to look at the menu bar below that. That's this guy right here. And what that has is a list of all the tools and commands, and they're kind of divided into categories. The first one is kind of your file options, file new, open, save, print, those kinds of things. Uh, next one over is going to be your editing commands, undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, selection tools. View is going to have a lot of your uh, view options for how you want your workspace to, uh, what you want it to look like. Insert deals with inserting designs as well as uh, embroidery objects. The object menu has a lot to deal with manipulating of embroidery objects. Graphics deals with the graphics that you typically have displayed beneath or behind your embroidery as you're digitizing. There are a lot of extra tools in Design Shop and those are typically located under the Tools drop-down. Your window drop-down will have uh, any projects that you have open so you can switch back and forth and how do you want to have all those windows organized. And then especially uh, helpful when starting out is the Help drop-down and that will take you to Help Topics which gets you to the manual for the software as well as about um, Design Shop. So if I click on this, it will show um, the level of software that I have, as well as uh, the version of software. So those are very handy, especially if you're calling in for support. Those are going to be things that we're going to want to know. All right, so let's clear that off there real quick. And then let's look at the bar underneath that which is this toolbar here. And this is the main toolbar that's going to be dealing mostly with uh, your file options. So we've got file new. And if you don't know what something does, if you hover over the icon, a tooltip will come up. Another way to start to learn these is if you look in the dropdowns that we were just looking at under the menu bar, if you have an icon to the left of it, that means that that command is available to you via a toolbar as well. You'll notice on this one, uh, on the right hand side, there is a keyboard shortcut listed as well, and that is Control plus N. So if I'm working on the keyboard and I hold my Control key and press N, I'll get a new document. So when you see an icon on the left, it's available on a toolbar. If you see a keyboard shortcut on the right, that's available via a keyboard shortcut. Um, with Design Shop, you have the ability going to Tools and Accelerator Editor to set up your own keyboard shortcuts. So that's kind of a handy way um, to add your own or ones that you're already familiar with. But you also have them on a lot of them on the toolbars. And if you, again, want to know what they are, if you hover over them, you can see a tooltip that pops up and tells you. So let me clear this off here. But this is the, the toolbar that we're looking at is that main one. But if I clear that highlight off there, you can actually see it in the real colors, which is kind of helpful. So the first one is new. That's just going to create a new blank document. The next one over is open. What that does is that opens an embroidery file. And so I'm going to open an embroidery file. These are located in the designs folder that is loaded with your software. And that's just on local disk C in designs. I'm just going to grab one day.ofm. When I select this, when I'm opening a file, uh, you'll notice over, uh, let me highlight that for you, over in kind of the lower right hand corner, we have design information. You've got the version of software or the version of OFM that it is, the version of file that it is, your stitch count, that's super handy, and your dimensions. Um, so if you have a bunch of files that look the same, so you have maybe one logo and several different sizes, just selecting it, you can see the size that it is. And clear that off there for you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and 
uh, click on open. As soon as I get out of my highlighting tool. And this opens up that design in my design shop and I can see on screen what it looks like and over on the right hand side I've got you know your color sequence and lots of information in what we call the project view. Alright so the next one over is insert file. So if I go to window real quick you can see that now I have multiple windows open. I have project one, which is the one that I started in, and then I have one day.ofm, which happens to be the second project that I opened today. Um, I have both of those. So opening it opens the file in its own window. Inserting the file is a little bit different. So if I click on this, it's going to look very, very much the same. It's the same kind of dialog box, and it works the same way if I select something, I get that information in the lower right-hand corner. Let's do something a little different. Let's do two day. The difference is it's saying insert and then you also have this checkbox here which says insert as a new design. If you uncheck that it will insert it at the same level as the the previous uh, design elements that you were dealing with. If you insert it as a new design so if it's checked it will insert at its own design level. So I'm going to leave that checked so we can see what that looks like and I'm going to hit open. The big difference is um, that it didn't open it up in its own window. It inserted this whole embroidery file into the file that I was working on before. So I now have two embroidery designs in my one file. You'll also notice that uh, the X and Y location of all of your stitches lined up exactly. So. Uh, when you copy and paste, when you insert, when you do any of those, um, the X and Y locations will line up exactly. So in this case, I actually have those two embroidery files. Um, in this case, it's one file, but two embroidery designs lined up exactly right on top of each other. So let's see how to separate those. Right now, I still have it selected. And I can click and drag that off so that you can actually see the two separate designs. Um, you'll also notice because I had that insert as uh, a new design selected in my insert dialog box that it is at its own level and it's actually nice and labeled for you so that's kind of handy. Alright the next one over that we're going to look at is save. Um, save is something that I do very very often. Um, I'm a little bit forgetful so every now and then I don't and then um, I will leave something running overnight, my computer may restart, and then I, I lose a lot of my work. So save, save often. Um, one thing that uh, I do want to mention is when you are just starting out and learning, what you may choose to do is go file, save as, and label it something different. Um, playing around or learning or something like that, version one, version two, anything to keep you from saving over your really good file. So if I order a design and I get it from my digitizer, but I want to see what they did and I want to mess around with it, um, it's a really great way to learn. Just do yourself a favor and save a second version so that you have a backup or keep the original in a folder far, far away and put a copy into a file that you uh, or a folder that you can kind of mess around with and not worry about accidentally saving over your original. The next one over is notes and what this allows you to do is uh, keep notes in your file and I know that sounds a little funny but um, typically when I'm doing uh, embroidery jobs I have a lot of things that I'm trying to keep track of. What am I sewing on? What kind of backing am I using? Um, who am I doing this for? Those kinds of things. And I used to keep a lot of that stuff on paper. Unfortunately, I tend to lose paper. So keeping these notes digitally with the file is a lifesaver for me. So that's what that notes box typically is used for. Um, really, really handy for me. And I hope it'll be really, really handy for you. Um, again, you could do who it was for, what was in it um, on sweatshirts 
whatever you want to have in there, um, good notes to keep, and then when you hit OK, and then when you save it, it will keep those notes with that file. Cut, copy, and paste. Um, very similar to uh, perhaps Word documents or graphic documents, pardon me, programs that you, you've used before. Um, the big difference is, um, you know, typically uh, with graphics documents, or I keep doing that, graphics programs um, that you use, when you copy and paste, it'll kind of put it over to the side so that you see that copy. Um, in this case, it won't. If you copy and paste something, it'll put it right on top of the other because we're keeping track of all those little X and Y locations of all those stitches. Um, so you'll see it appear in the project view, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, but just know that they're lined up right on top of each other. All right, undo and redo. Um, love these tools. So I'm going to hit undo real quick, and it's going to move that back. And then I can hit redo, and it will go back. Um, undo and redo, use them all the time. Those are kind of my oops buttons. Um, one thing that I love about our software is when I click on this drop down, I can go back and it kind of keeps a history for me. So I can go all the way back to a specific movement instead of hitting uh, undo, 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 or control Z, control Z, control Z, which is the keyboard shortcut for undo. Print. Uh, what print will do is it will print a run sheet for you. Um, if I go to file and print preview, it will uh, show you what this looks like. And so it'll print a run sheet. It has uh, your design information, gives you a nice preview of your designs, gives you your dimensions, um, gives you uh, your stitch count, your trim count, gives you your color sequence, gives you the exact color numbers of the, the stuff that you have in there. Um, now, all this is kept in your OFM files, so that's our, our wireframe file. Um, we keep a lot of information in that file, so all of that's kept there. But if you are saving this out for a friend or um, you want to keep a paper version because paper feels a little more comfortable to you, this is a good way to do that. So let me, let me uh, well, first let me clear that and then let me get out of there. All right. The next bit uh, that we should probably look at are your Zoom tools, and these are these guys right here. Now, this is something that we'll go over in a session on its own, um, but basically this is how you zoom in and out of your design. Um, I'll do it real quick so that you can see. Just let me clear that off there and then get back into my software. As I uh, click and drag a box, I can zoom into that box, but it's a really good way to zoom into your design so you can see how those stitches are laying. Now, one thing I, I want to be very, very clear on is your zoom tools just kind of move you in and out of your design. It doesn't actually scale your design. So even though things are getting bigger on screen, you're just getting a much closer look at it. It's not changing the size of the design. And if you look on the bottom of your screen, uh, we've got the kind of the zoom bar and scale right there. Um, that isn't changing as I zoom in and out. Those numbers stay the same. So you can see that your designs are staying the same size. You're just zooming in and out of it. Another way, let me clear that off there real quick. Another way to uh, look at a size of something is to click on the ruler and you can click and drag it across, and you can measure that distance. In this case, I have my measurement units for this set to inches, so it's showing it in inches and points. Um, and in our software, a point is just a tenth of a millimeter, so you've got metric and inches right there for you all the time. The next one over, so now we're looking at, I guess I should highlight that for you guys. We're looking at this bar right here, and this deals a lot with how things uh, appear on screen. Let me clear that off there so you get things in real color again. Um, if I left click on this guy right here, it will display my currently selected hoop. If I left click again, it will hide it. If I right click, it will bring up the properties to select a hoop. 
The next one over is my design origin. So anytime I have one of these icons with these little eyeballs, it's showing or hiding something for me. If I click on that, I'm going to get a red crosshair and that is showing 0, 0, X and Y. So I've got my origin there. My next one over is a grid. So we have this nice grid work showing. If you right click on it, you can get the properties of both the origin and the grids. You can change the color, you can change the spacing, all of that. Right now I have mine set up to quarter of an inch um, for my subdivisions and a full inch for uh, my major divisions. So the darker gray lines are an inch apart and the smaller ones are a quarter of an inch apart. Um, and yeah, I'm doing math to convert metric to inches. Um, but you can change that by going to tools and options and changing those measurement units like we looked at before. So you can change um, your ruler, your grid and grid ruler. So that's where we were looking before. You've got those options. The next one over, let me turn off my origin. The next one over is show stitches in 3D. So if I click on that, it will give my stitches a 3D rendering which is really, really handy for seeing how things layer, um, what's sewing on top, and what kind of stitch am I dealing with? Am I dealing with a satin stitch? Am I dealing with a fill stitch? When it's out of 3D, it's a little bit hard to tell that um, without seeing all the needle penetrations, but showing it in 3D, I can instantly tell that my leaves are satin stitches, my pear and my bird are fill stitches. Um, handy, handy, handy for that. All right, the next one over is show or hide graphics. So if I'm digitizing over uh, an image and I wanna see just what I have in stitches, sometimes when I'm digitizing, I think I have something done and I've missed a spot. Um, if I hide that graphic, I will see, wow, I'm, I'm really missing that spot. So that's really handy for that. Next one over is show or hide stitches. Right now it's not gonna do anything for me because I don't have anything selected. Let me select uh, something for you. Let's select out, select the pairs and then if I come up here I can hide these stitches and that will make those stitches disappear um, let's bring those back and let's select the bird and let's hide those stitches and so now when that's hidden uh, if I zoom into that bird you can see all the stitches that are running underneath of that so showing and hiding my stitches um, doesn't delete the stitches. They'll still be there in the sew out, but what it allows me to do is hide those stitches and select through them. So because it's not visible, I can't select it. So I can actually go in and select uh, the walk stitch that's going, or the, the travel stitch that's going between pairs, and I can get through that bird. If that yellow was visible, if I were to click there, I wouldn't be able to do that. So show and hide stitches is really handy for that. The next one over is toggle connectors. So let's get to a good spot to see what this actually does. This is a pretty good spot right here. So toggle connectors, let's go into 3D. You can see there are three pieces of thread here. I think it's three. Um, those threads aren't actually stitches take it out of 3D, you can actually see it's a little bit fainter. Um, and if I turn toggle connectors off, those stitches will go away. So what's happening is I have a piece of this leaf and then a piece of the next leaf. And there's no trim in between them, so there's just a piece of thread, but there's not actually a stitch there. So when you go over to the machine, the machine's going to stitch a piece of the leaf, jump over, stitch the next leaf, and there's gonna be a little bit of a thread there. With toggle connectors turned off, I don't see that, but it will show up on my machine. Since I don't like surprises, I like to leave toggle connectors on. That gives me very realistic showing of trimmed and non-trimmed threads. So this is definitely one of my favorite features. I leave it on all the time, just so that I don't have any surprises when I go to the machine. All right, next one over is toggle expanded points. This one's grayed out currently because I don't have anything selected. As soon as I select something, I have it available to me and I can click this on. And then if I deselect it, you can see that I have little bitty crosshairs wherever the needle is penetrating. Um, not something I use overly often. Occasionally I will do it, but it's very, very rare. 
The next over is my editing mode. This is wireframe editing. This is when I can grab the outside of those shapes and move them around and it will fill in stitches appropriately for me. This is what I do most of the time. The next one over is expanded editing mode. I can click on this and it will take me to expanded editing mode. And in this mode, I am moving every single needle penetration one by one. So I am in charge of every single needle penetration. This is something I do incredibly rarely. This is not something I do very often at all, um, but it is there if you need it. All right. So that kind of deals with, let me get back to wireframe editing mode. That kind of deals with this chunk now of your toolbars. Um, let's look at this last little bit over here. So what I'm talking about are these tools right here. And the first tools that we're going to look at is this first one, which is uh, the auto updates of um, ties and trims. So in your properties, you have a property that says if these stitches or if these elements are this far apart, go ahead and trim it out. If you're moving things around on screen, that may change that distance. And if you want to see if it's going to trim or not, you can hit auto update. Now, anytime you save, that will automatically update as well. So in the project view, when you hit save, if you see some trims kind of disappear and reappear somewhere else and they say auto trim, that's what's going on. Those auto trims are getting automatically updated. Um, if you wanna see it before saving, go ahead and click on that auto update button. All right, so let's turn the origin back on and let's zoom out so we can see what we're dealing with for this next little bit. Um, the next one over is center design. And what center design does is it moves your entire project over the design origin. So right now you can see that the, the partridge and the pear tree is lined up right over that origin, but my whole design is kind of shifted over to the left. So if I click on center design, it will move everything so that it's perfectly centered over that design origin. Now, center design is something that I typically do uh, before I save a design and send it over to the machine. Every now and then, I won't do it, but probably 90% of the time I'm centering a design before I save it and before I send it to a machine. That way when I load a hoop onto my machine and I've got everything lined up just the way I want it, the machine doesn't then suddenly go somewhere else and sew because the design's not centered over the origin. All right, let's look at this next bar down here. So this down here and right now that has nothing in it and that's because I don't currently have anything selected but as soon as I select either an element or a tool the most common properties for that let me clear that color off there now that you know where we're looking uh, the most common the most common properties for that will show up automatically which is really really handy now if you guys were following along and you clicked on a tool and you clicked on screen and you started digitizing and now things are going all kinds of crazy, um, you're scrolling everywhere, hit escape and it will remove those input points. But the tool will stay selected. If you hit escape again, it will deselect the tool. So um, when I'm digitizing and uh, my screen starts scrolling out of control, remember that escape is kind of your get me out of this problem button. So scrolling around, hit escape, it will remove all those input points, but it'll leave that tool selected. If you start clicking, it will start digitizing again. So hit escape, it will remove those tools, or pardon me, input points. If you hit escape again, it will deselect that tool and then you can go click on your, your scroll bars. You can move wherever you need to move. All right, let's look down here. So in this area, we have our input tools, and those are going to be used uh, for digitizing and editing. The first chunk of four, uh, four, it's two by four, so I guess it'd be eight. Uh, this first chunk here is dealing with all of the kind of element creation. This next little chunk right down here deals with kind of those element editing. Do I insert a hole? Do I insert a splice? A stitch direction line? Do I change my entry and exit point? That's what all those guys do. And then this last batch down here deals uh, a lot with selection, the first chunk. 
um, and selecting through elements and down through pieces so it can kind of walk down through. And then changing your element type or using um, kind of custom shapes is what that last bit is. Those will all be dealt with with your digitizing and editing. All right, this next batch down here is your color palette. And uh, the big one is your current color. So if I were to start digitizing, that's the color I'm gonna be dealing in. The little one is my background color. These guys down here are your active colors. I tend to think of those as the spools of thread or the cones of thread that I'm using for this design. I may use them multiple times, but I'm only gonna have one cone. And then down here, I think of as my library of colors. Um, now these are just ones that have been selected. They're gonna be kind of easy to go click and grab a color, but they may not be the color that you want exactly. And uh, if you want a color specifically, um, you can right click and select a, sp a specific color. All right, let's look down below at this bar. We talked about it briefly before, but let's talk about it a little bit more. Um, down in the lower left, we have the X and Y location of your cursor. So as I'm moving around, it will show me the X and Y location of that. Um, the next one, the L and the A, not something that shows up when I'm editing, but when I'm digitizing, it will have properties in there. And um, what I tend to use that for is making sure that I'm not creating things that are smaller than a needle. So it's going to show me the length of my line and the angle of my line. I actually use that quite more than, um, quite a bit more than I thought I would. and Honestly, I use it quite a bit. Here we've got our zoom level um, and you've got a drop. In this case, it drops up. So you can select your zoom level this way as well. You can also type in here if you want a very specific zoom level. If I wanted 167%, I could zoom into 167% just by clicking in that box and typing. Any of these boxes, you can also click in and scroll and it will change to different values. All right, let's clear this off here so we can see a little bit better. And then uh, the next bit we have is our size. So it's showing the width and the height. And you can change these numbers and it will scale everything. If I keep this box selected, uh, this is lock aspect ratio. It will keep everything proportional. If I deselect that, you can scale the width and height um, disproportionately, which is kind of cool. You also have your stitch count. Um, which will change as you scale. You've got um, your horizontal mirror and your vertical mirror, so you can flip things around if you want. And then you've got your slow redraw. So if I click on this, it will begin to sew out on screen as if it were sewing um, on my machine. It's just sewing out much, much faster. If I click on draw to stitch, it will gray everything out and then color it in as it's sewing so you can see the whole thing before you start, but it'll just be gray. You can also do that in 3D. Now, what, what Draw to Stitch is particularly useful for me is um, I can watch which way that uh, fabric is being pushed by the stitches. So if I am sewing along and I notice that I'm starting to meet back up with myself, I can kind of edit that to avoid pushing material uh, before I ever get to the machine. So it can help me avoid a few of my initial sew outs. I can never avoid them completely. I always sew something out and then have to go back and edit it, but this can help out with that quite a bit. All right, so now let's look at uh, this right-hand side here. And this is the project view. Um, what that deals with are kind of all of the elements in your design and it will keep them kind of organized for you in different levels. So if I scroll to the top, I have kind of this hierarchy and, and we'll definitely talk about that. It, it definitely deserves its own session. Um, you also have, uh, again, the ability to move this around if you need to onto another screen, just click and drag, there you go. So these are your wireframe elements in the project view. If you collapse this down, you'll also see your whole color sequence as well as you know the, the name of your design. The stitches tab shows all the individual stitches, um, shows the number of the stitch, the X and Y location. Um, that's a lot of information, not something I use overly often. The change in X, the change in Y, again, 
not something I use that much. And then you get to deal with this column. And this column, the L, is something I use all the time, all the time, all the time. Um, if I am dealing with a problematic file where I am just getting a ton of thread breaks, um, typically I will look in this column around that area and see if I start having stitches that are smaller than a needle. So if I start seeing a bunch of those numbers fall below 10, which is kind of my minimum for that kind of thing, um, I know that I need to go in and edit that area. So this happens a lot uh, if I'm dealing with small lettering and I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing when I set it up. That may be part of the problem. So I'll go in and I will edit that. And then when those numbers start being above 10, I'm going to have a much uh, better and easier time of, of sewing that out. And again, all that's doing is, or all I'm doing is checking to see are my stitches smaller than the needle that I'm sewing with. Use that all the time. All right, uh, Navigator. This red box shows my view window, which is this guy over here. And I can click and drag this around. Um, if I control and click and drag a box, it will zoom to that box. This is kind of handy if you accidentally zoom into a little bitty place in the middle of nowhere. Um, you can see it in the Navigator, see where you are. You can control, click, and drag a box. Or you can use one of your zoom tools to get out of it. But that's kind of your project view. You've got your project tab, which has your wireframe elements, your stitches tab, which has all your stitches, and then uh, your navigator, which kind of lets you know where your view window is. And that kind of brings us to the last big chunk, which is this guy right here. And that is your view window. And that's where I do the majority of all of my digitizing and editing. Um, I do a lot of my work in the view window. Again, digitizing, editing, moving stuff around, visualizing what things are going to be like. Um, that's where I do a lot of my work. So you've got lots of different areas in Design Shop to look for your tools and use those tools. And hopefully now after this tour, you're a little bit more comfortable with all of those areas.